Let me tell you a story. This one. About 20 years ago, the, I was asked to serve as the um, executive producer of a gathering at the United Nations of religious and spiritual leaders. And it was the largest such gathering in UN history, when 1,500 leaders from around the world came. And the program was funded by uh, a number of very wealthy individuals. One of the sponsors was Stephen J. Rockefeller. Now, the Rockefeller family, as you know, yeah. very well-to-do family. Stephen Rockefeller, um, when in his younger years, he was headed for the uh, seminary. He was going to be a priest. But then he discovered Buddhism. And uh, so he's been a practicing Buddhist for many years. Um, and a wise man. Uh, I, I've conducted many interviews for the books that I've done. And uh, sometimes I can be a little impertinent <laughs> in the questions that I ask. So I sat, we were sitting down and the cameras were rolling and the lights were on it. I said, so tell me, what's it like to be a Rockefeller? <laughs> and he was, he was polite. He's a gentleman. He took it very nicely. Uh, and the answer he gave me was uh, something I'll never forget. He said, you know, some of us are called upon to play out our parts on a grand stage world world stage others among us are called upon to play our our parts on a more modest stage but who's to say which is more important our responsibility is to take whatever opportunities there are in front of us and to make the most of them i never forgot that because years before, 1971, I was with Srila Prabhupada in Paris. And I asked him, you know, Srila Prabhupada, you, you always say in your lectures and in your books and your writings that the gopis' love for Krishna is the highest love of all. Is that what you want us to do? Do you want your disciples to love Krishna like the gopis? <laughs> and he said, well, that's very nice if you want to do that. But you have to be completely free of all material desire. He said, for now, you should read the books. And he mentioned in particular, Chaitanya Taratamrita, which he had begun to translate at that time. And he mentioned Chaitanya Bhagavat, which he had not translated. So to your, quest, to your point earlier, Here's an example where Srila Prabhupada told me personally to read a book that he had not written. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, well, I'll do as you have suggested. But still, I don't understand. If the love of the gopis is the highest love, why would anybody ever want to be anything else? Why would anybody want to be a blade of grass or a cow or a, an older person in Vrindavan or a coward boy or... Why would anyone want to be anything else? He said, and this to this day I've been meditating on this, he said ultimately it's a question of personal choice. Usually, he said, the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu end up in the mood of the gopis. But you have, there's something you have to understand about the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, if you are a big glass or are a little glass, when you're full, you're full. Beautiful. That, has, that one moment with Srila Prabhupada has seen me through some very dark times. Mm 